If you were a kid in the 1950s, 60s, or 70s, you're probably very familiar with the Little Rascals, or the R-Gang comedies as they were originally called. In 1921, silent film producer Hal Roach auditioned a young girl to appear in a film. The girl seemed overly made up to him and much too rehearsed for the part. After she left, he looked out his window at a lumber yard across the street and saw some children arguing over a stick. After watching for about 15 minutes, Roach thought that a series about kids just acting like kids would be a success. Work began on a new kids series with the working title Hal Roach's Rascals. The first pilot film, titled Our Gang, was in the can, but Roach wasn't happy with the results and had it reshot. He took the short to several theaters in Hollywood and received very positive feedback. The original episodes were shot during the silent film era. The first cast was mostly kids recommended by studio employees, with the notable exception of one Ernest Frederick Morrison otherwise known as Sunshine Sammy Morrison, who was already under contract with Hal Roach Studios. Roach had hired Ernie for a short subject series about a young black boy, but theater owners were nervous about showing the series because of racial issues, and it ended after just one film. Ernie became the first actor cast to play in the Hal Roach Rascals and was the first African-American actor to be signed to a long-term studio contract. He was paid $225 a week for his appearances in the silent comedy shorts until leaving the series in 1925 when the studio refused to give him a $75 a week raise. Most of the early shorts were shot outdoors and on location and featured various animal characters like Dinah the Mule. The first short released to theaters was the fourth one filmed and was titled One Terrible Day. The pilot, titled Our Gang, wasn't released until almost two months later. The biggest stars of the early silent film era series were Ernie Sunshine Sammy Morrison, Mickey Daniels, Mary Cornman, and Alan Hoskins as Farina. Farina eventually became the most popular member of the 1920s gang and the most popular black child star of the 1920s. He was only one year old when the series began. When Hoskins signed his last contract with Roach, he was being paid $350 a week, more than any other cast member. By 1929, the Argan comedies were entering the talking era of motion pictures with the 25-minute film called Small Talk. The original cast members were leaving now, and new members were being added with the arrival of the popular Matthew Stymie Beard and Jackie Cooper. Cooper in particular added a real spark of personality during the two years that he was with the gang. He was featured in several episodes centering around his infatuation with the new school teacher, Miss Crabtree, played by June Marlowe. Cooper soon moved on to doing movies, and Hal Roach sold his contract to MGM in 1931. With the short When the Wind Blows in 1930, background music was added to the shorts, and the jazz-inspired songs, written by music directors Marvin Hatley and Leroy Shield, quickly became unmistakable hallmarks of the R-Gang films. Don't you know what an uncle is? No. Well, an uncle's just the same as Mandy. Only an uncle wears pants. In 1931, there was another round of cast changes, with Jackie Cooper leaving and the departure of Farina, Chubby Chaney, and Mary Ann Jackson. 1931 also saw the addition of the most famous member of the gang, George Spanky McFarland, when he was only three years old. Spanky ended up with the gang for the next 11 years. Young Spanky was the star of arguably one of the funniest shorts ever produced on the series and also considered one of the most racist. 1933's The Kid from Borneo featured Spanky mistaking the tribally attired Bumbo, the wild man from Borneo, as his Uncle George. Are you going to eat me up, Uncle George? <laughs> Spanky's mom had explained that Uncle George was the black sheep of the family. The short was later pulled from the television syndication package because of its racial humor and negative treatment of the handicapped. It can still be seen today on the DVD release. 
In 1933, producer-director Robert McGowan, who was burned out working with the child actors, abruptly left the series. The show went on hiatus for several months while they searched for another director to take over. Enter Gus Means, who was formerly a cartoonist and had directed some silent short films, including some Buster Brown comedies. He directed the R Gang shorts from 1934 to 1936, and also directed Laurel and Hardy's Babes in Toyland in 1934. Means left Roach due to creative conflicts in 1937. In 1935, a kid named Carl Switzer and his brother Harold impressed Hal Roach with a singing performance while visiting the studio commissary on a sightseeing visit from their home in Illinois. Roach was so impressed, he signed both brothers to contracts for the shorts. Harold was given two nicknames, Slim and Deadpan, while Carl was anointed Alfalfa. Alfalfa became Spanky's sidekick and was known for his hair parted down the middle and a huge cowlick in the back. He also had a terrible singing voice, which was encouraged by Roach. Also joining the gang that year was Darla Hood and Eugene Lee as Porky. By 1937 and into the series' final years, the cast that most people are familiar with was finally in place. Spanky, Alfalfa, Darla, Buckwheat, and Porky with Bullies Butch, Woim, and Waldo the Bookworm. With declining profits, Roach finally decided to stop producing the series and sold the rights to MGM in 1938 for $25,000. MGM produced a total of 52 R Gang shorts, with many written by former Roach director Hal Law and junior director Anthony Mack. 1939 saw the addition of the young Robert Blake, and in 1940, Billy Froggy Lachlan was hired. Many film historians consider the MGM era films inferior entries in the franchise. Alfalfa, Spanky, and Buckwheat were kept into their teen years, and the children's performances were stiff instead of natural, like the Roach produced shorts. By 1944, MGM canceled the series as revenues dropped and the theaters complained that the quality was slipping. But the story doesn't end here. In 1949, Hal Roach bought back the rights to the R Gang catalog of 1927 to 1938 from MGM. MGM still retained the rights to the MGM produced shorts and kept the Our Gang name under the contract terms. Roach then repackaged the shorts as the Little Rascals and reissued them to theaters in 1950. Despite the series' popularity and the substantial profits, none of the child actors ever received any residuals from the repackaging. In 1954, Allied artists syndicated the films to television, where they became wildly popular. By 1957, MGM was also offering their package of Our Gang shorts to syndication, and some stations bought both packages, showing them together as the Little Rascals. In 1963, Howe Road Studios was going bankrupt, and then sold the rights to the Little Rascals to a new company, King World Productions. By the early 70s, King World Productions dealt with controversy over racial humor in some of the Little Rascal shorts. Edits of two to four minutes were made in many of the shorts, while some were virtually cut in half. Eight of the shorts were pulled entirely from the syndication package. Then in 1986, Turner Entertainment acquired the rights and by the early 2000s, many of the edits were reinstated, but not all of them. Moan and Groan Incorporated, A Lad in a Lamp, and The Kid from Borneo are still excluded from the syndication packages, but all shorts are now available on DVD releases. If you were a fan of The Little Rascals, tell us who is your favorite rascal in the comments below, and what was your favorite episode? As always, this is Rich from Rerun Zone, signing off.